six two. <laughs> okay, guys. So in general, um, you know, the, the, the answers have to be totally okay. self-contained. If I answer, yeah, it can't be yes or no question because you're not going to hear my question. So just gotcha. you know, yeah, and try okay. to keep them short. No need to stretch them out longer than that. And we'll be a couple takes. Yeah. After whatever, do whatever. All right, okay. guys. Looking okay. right at me. Tell me why you guys joined the, the department the story behind that. Well, I think the main reason that we joined is uh, my wife and I, um, you know, suggested that uh, Evan and I check out the fire station. She saw a, an announcement and a way for us to give back something to the community. So we were looking for some way to do that and uh, went by the fire station to meet the guys. And uh, uh, the funniest thing is never thought about being a fireman. But I think when we got there, there was a connect with the guys who were there. We really felt there was a connection with regard to the teamwork and the guys who were there. And uh, the cool thing about uh, making a commitment to the fire station, which I think we both kind of felt, is that we got an opportunity to go through that together. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a unique thing that uh, we got to experience. We went through Firefighter 1 and a lot of the training together. And so, uh, you know, it's the funniest thing is, you know, you meet the guys and you meet the teamwork. Um, got a nice way for us to build uh, teamwork together as a family unit. And I think the one thing to never think about is, you know, they talk about being a, a, a hero, you know, about being a firefighter, being a hero. And I don't think we think of ourselves that way. But I can tell you that when I think about Evan and the commitment he made as a junior and the commitment at a young age to do this type of community service and the service there, I can tell you I view him as a hero for me and really the commitment he's made in terms of trying to give something back and what have you. So I can tell you that uh, that's one of the things that I respect him for at an early age, making that commitment and being a, um, making that commitment and being that uh, kind of dedication to uh, here as a community and things like that. So. Evan had a truck go through that last one. Okay. Right. You, you so. Evan, your turn. Um, do, you, do you imagine maybe you're with it at some point? Yeah, I mean, I definitely imagine my son joining a fire company. Uh, if, if I live here, I'd hope it would be the Lingahawken Fire Company, but um, I think it'd be a great thing to get my son involved in, just have him give back to the community as I want to. So. All right, guys. looking at me. Um, all right, guys, tell, me, tell us about your most exciting call you've had. Uh, you know, I think uh, when I think about some of the calls, I think, you know, we got a variety of calls in terms of fires and rescues. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that's underestimated is why we think we do a lot of fire calls, we do a lot of vehicle rescues. And there's a lot of vehicle rescues that went on. When I think about one, um, there's a particular vehicle rescue where we had a, a, a gentleman trapped in a, in a truck and it was actually a vehicle that had flipped on top of him, so he had an ocular fracture. So he had a, a, a um, the car and the vehicle was up against his face. And it was a rescue where we, you know, in these type of situations, we're looking to try to excavate the person as quickly as possible to make sure we can get them to a facility to make sure we can administer care as quickly as possible to make sure, you know, of course, uh, you know, we can save the victim. Um, well, this particular gentleman was the one that was there, and I think when I think about the, the vehicle rescue, I think when I think about everything that was there, you see a group of guys who really show up on the scene, you assess the situation and really, you know, work with the paramedics to make sure not only stabilize the victim, but make sure we extricate them as quickly as possible to do that. And this particular vehicle situation was one that um, was kind of tricky, once again, because of the way that the vehicle was located. So when I think about on that, that's actually one of the situations that I think about. Uh, we're able to extricate the gentleman and within 20 minutes or so, get him on his way to uh, seek uh, additional care. And um, we're able to make sure that uh, really him as well as the other vehicle, which another crew was doing, uh, we're able to seek that help and make sure that, uh, you know, in terms of that care that they needed was uh, as promptly as possible. So, so. Okay. All right. So guys, what's, uh, what's the best thing about being a firefighter? Uh, the best thing about being the firefighter is um, having the pride to know that you give back to the community and you sacrifice for others. And not many people get to say that, especially at a young age like me. So that's probably the best thing about being a fireman. Do you guys ever have anybody come up to you and thank you for just the general work you've done or something specific you've done? You know, I think in general we receive uh, kudos from uh, the folks that are there on scene and, the, you know, the folks who are there who recognize the commitment that we make. The funniest part is I think we as firefighters, we just do what we do and really don't think about that. You know, it's something we think about afterwards and really don't think about the commitment we make and, and the effort that we put forth. I think it's something that's reflective. You know, really sit there and as uh, 
we sit there and we really just kind of give back to the community. It's something that uh, we just do what we do. And I think it's something that's uh, um, more of a thanks that we really think about secondarily there or not at all. I think it's something that uh, we're just out there trying to do the job we do to go ahead and and uh, give something back. And I think, uh, you know, the commitment that we make is really something that, uh, um, you know, is really kind of there. I don't know, if whether you think. Uh, you don't do it just for the money? Uh, unfortunately, we don't get paid. We're actually volunteers. <laughs> so I think as a volunteer organization, you know, when you sit there and you think about what you do to the community, I think it's, it, it's really something that, once again, I really, I, I really don't know if I ever thought about doing that. At the same point, I could sit there and say, I can't imagine doing anything else. There's a camaraderie with the crew um, that we kind of feel. And, um, you know, there, there's just a sense of teamwork that we go out and we, we do what we do, we respond to calls, whether it be fires or auto extrications or what have you. And, it, and it's something I really don't even think about. And it comes secondary to, I think, what we do as a nature to responding to calls and just trying to make sure that what we do to uh, resolve the situations and really take care of everything and, and make sure whether it be a fire or whether it be a vehicle, we respond to make sure that everything in terms of person, persons that are involved and or property are really taken care of and really salvaged. I think it's something that we don't even think about until after the fact and you really sit there and folks mention something and really reflect on exactly the commitment that we make. I think it's part of our training and I really think it's something we really just kind of respond to and do. So, Ev, I don't know if you have anything else. Or, That's about it. Yeah. So. Um, any, any <coughs> anecdotes that really were, have been memorable for you, like, you know, special moments, you know, save people's photographs, you know, <coughs> save their animals, save their pets, you know, that kind of thing that you can remember? Um, you know, uh, nothing in particular. I think, uh, I think the biggest thing is when we sit there and we go back and we reflect with our crews and we kind of debrief over what we've done, you know, really kind of sit there as a team and you really kind of evaluate um, the actions you have taken to really kind of resolve and save whether it be property in terms of a fire or lives in the case of a fire end or a extrication in terms of an auto rescue. Um, you know, we go back and reflect on that and we debrief and I think uh, the, the commitment for us and, it, and I think the biggest thing from my perspective is when you hear your other teammates sit there and say there's the response that you did that's proactive that really kind of resulted in an efficient rescue that potentially could save the lives of someone and or the property that's involved. I think that's really the biggest commitment that we have. Um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the community really is not there and part of the rescues, they're really kind of buffered from this and kind of separated. But when you hear your peers kind of sit there and say, you've done a great job on a rescue, I think that's the biggest commitment uh, that we can have is uh, in terms of the acknowledgement from our peers to sit there and say, you're really acting in a very professional, really efficient manner to go ahead and rescue and save property and lives. I think that's the biggest thing that we have. So, uh, with a really brief answer this time, um, tell, us about, <laughs> tell, tell me about how. That was as brief as I can get. How important it is, how yeah. your peers feel about you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think when we think about it is, uh, when, you know, uh, you know, we have accolades from whatever. When we sit there and we come back and we debrief and, and evaluate a situation, I think the comments from our peers where we sit there and we sit there and uh, we get the evaluation of our peers acknowledging great action we've taken to really expedite uh, a fire situation or rescue and we get those accolades. I think that's one of the things as a firefighter that you really have because it's the professionals in the field that really acknowledge your efficiency and your professionalism in the rescue. They really kind of acknowledge I think who we are and what we do and really what we strive for at every moment to really try to efficiently save lives and uh, protect property. So I think those are the things that really value in the fire service. So. We had a pretty nice rumble from that truck in the middle of his... Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, well, that, yeah. was a, that was so. a re redundant so. thing. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to be... Um, <clears throat> volunteering to other people? You want to take that? You want me to take that? Uh, uh, yeah, um, to my friends all the time, I, I recommend that they become a volunteer fireman, actually. Um, my friend Alex, uh, he just became a volunteer fireman, and uh, it, was really, it was really good to see me helping other people help others. So. I think that's one of the best things about being a fireman is just getting other people to help out. Um, Tell us why you joined the fire department story. Well, I joined because of, golly, I, my, I was a teacher of fourth grade and my wife or my life was filled with kids and women. and. I, I didn't have any any guys to uh, buddy around with, 
and I've always loved uh, firefighters. And uh, I grew up in Baltimore where there was a fire station near our home. And uh, it just seemed like the best place to be. So I, I joined in 1960 and uh, I'm still active. Not, they don't let me ride the fire trucks anymore, but I'm secretary and safety officer, so. Uh, why you joined the fire department. Oh, and is it going to bring your dad into it, hopefully, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yep, okay. absolutely. Ready? And go ahead. Well, when I was growing up, my father was the assistant chief. My best friend's father was the chief. And uh, they were our heroes. And uh, there was... Definitely, we were going to be firefighters, Dwayne and I. And uh, that was the reason we joined. It's uh, been a family tradition. And uh, my sons have... Uh, each had a turn in the fire service as well. Okay. Can, you, can I get a little snippet saying, uh, when I was growing up, firefighters were my heroes? Sure. Mm -hmm. Ready? And action. When I was growing up, firefighters were my heroes. That's one of them right there. It's Perfect. FYI, we are in a car is passing in the back. Okay, guys, tell me, you know, whoever wants to take it, what's been your most exciting call you've been on? I'd say maybe Bill Smith's where we had the cow yeah. in the living room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It was paper mache. Yeah, he was an artist. <laughs> and he had this paper mache bull or Holstein in his living room. And uh, that, it was interesting. That was actually a fire, though? Yeah, yeah. There, was, yeah. there was a room and contents on the second floor, but you had to go past the paper mache cow first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about, how um, about... You want to take that one again? So, um, do you guys in, in the in the fire service do you only need like young men, strong men? Well, uh, we we need uh, some men, young, and as Larry and John uh, would attest, I mean they're middle aged, but they joined. I was thirty six when I joined, uh, and in a sense, getting mature people it makes it easier for training but uh but we bring them in at age 14 and bill came in in 1970 as a 14 year old and uh so so basically you know you guys you guys could use pretty much anybody of any age in a way right? yeah There's yeah we, different things so can you talk about that a little bit sure we uh we need people of all ages and backgrounds because everybody brings something to the table. The fire service is not just firefighting, there's administration, there's fundraising, and the wider variety of people we get helps to make us stronger because we're able to rely on their abilities. Great. Tell us a little bit, so, so just one, maybe one phrase, something like, the fire service is not just about fighting fires. Just maybe mm -hmm. something like that. Sure. Mm -hmm. And action. The fire service isn't just about fighting fires. No. <laughs> uh, we lost the sun, so let's have him say it again. Ten it's seconds. coming back for 10 seconds. Okay, go ahead. The fire service isn't just about fighting fires. Great. Um, all right. Uh, so has, has, has firefighting strengthened your relationship, father-son relationship? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, it definitely has. Um, we've worked together on a lot of fires over the last... Uh, well, 40 years, and uh, it, uh, it's a bond, both father and son, and we develop a bond with each other. So yeah. you develop a brotherhood in the yeah. fire service yeah. that isn't blood. Tell us about you know, what it does with people's leadership skills. I think it, it really, with, uh, with enough training, people then have confidence to, uh, to take actions, to lead, and uh, to be led. And I, uh, the training we get, I think, is excellent. And it's certainly much better now than it was when I started, but it's, uh, it's excellent training, uh, professional t uh, instructors, and uh, 
people used to ask my wife about, oh, aren't you worried that George is doing that? And she said, no, he's trained. And I think that's, that's one of the things that really is important. Um, how about um, so, so a real simple line, like something like the fire service, you know, uh, makes great leaders, something yeah. like that. Well, the fire service does help to make great leaders. All right, maybe one more, one or two more questions. Um, uh, we got a fire truck coming. Okay, camera speed. So tell me about the, the strong bonds that you that you know you, you get with other firefighters. Mm. Well, we uh, we develop a really strong bond with each other because we trade together. We have opportunity to work together, and we have to be tight with each other that we know what the other person is going to do, and we fall back on our training. And that all develops a very tight bond as a unit. Mm -hmm. um, so you actually, so if you can say it really quick, really concisely, um, you, so it, it's the third generation now that's, that has been a part of the fire service, right? Right. Um, so tell me a little bit about what Sure. Go ahead. Well, I followed in my father's footsteps as a firefighter. Both of my sons have had an opportunity as firefighters, and now I have a three-year-old grandson. And uh, he has his little fire truck and his helmet, and we hope that he'll be one of us uh, someday. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>